everybody, it's Chibi, and today, as you can see, I have a different type of background. I have a green screen now, so I'm just testing it out. This is my first test video. While testing it out, I'm going to be reviewing World Trigger, so if the green screen looks bad or if there's something wrong with it, please, Chibi, let me know in the comments below. Please be honest. I just want your honest thoughts about it, but anyways, let's talk about this episode of World Trigger. So, one thing I want to say, I, I want to point out the, war, like, the big drop we had in this episode. Like, we had a massive drop of information dropped upon us in this episode of World Trigger. Like, a lot of world building, too. And which took me by surprise. When I watched this episode, when I got into, like, the first four or five minutes of the episode, and we found out about these other planets in the neighborhood, I'm like... What the fuck? Like, whoa, whoa. Because when I fought of the neighborhood, you know, this other world, the neighbor's world, I fought of, like, you know, like another planet. I, I fought of another planet, yes, but I didn't think there was planets, you know, with an S at the end. I didn't think there was hundreds of worlds out there with different people and probably different cultures and different things out there that has, like, different types of you know, black triggers and stuff like that. So... To see in this episode how it just does this world building drop upon us of saying like yeah there's hundred worlds out there like there's a lot of worlds out there and there's just so many ways you can adventure in this series and it leaves us with a lot of potential like there's a lot of potential in this series now after this episode of World Trigger the potential of World Trigger just jumped up into an entirely different level because the world building now it makes me wonder, like, are we going to get to visit a lot of these different planets? Because there's just so many out there. Like, we only got to see the tip of the iceberg when it came to some of these planets in this episode of World Trigger. Like, we got to see a frost, uh, frozen planet that has a lot of snow. And when you saw one that looked like a rocky mountain, looked pretty badass. Kind of reminded me of Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings. And then you had another one that was just, you know, like a standard type of looking, you know, border world with, you know, dinosaur type things. It's just, it was really cool. I, I love getting to see something like that in this episode. Seeing the world building of World Trigger. Now it has me even more invested into the series after seeing something like that. Because... Now I want to know, like, are we going to get to see multiple worlds? Because when Osamu, Kuga, and Chika go off into the neighborhood, you know, the world, the other world pretty much, will they visit a lot of these planets? Like, I really, really hope World Trigger visits all these other planets. I know it's probably not possible to visit hundreds of worlds because, you know, time frame of manga and stuff like that when it comes to arcs, but I hope that we get to see a good variety of worlds because with the setup of this, we can see a lot of different environments. It's kind of like the islands of One Piece. When you go to a different island of One Piece, each different island might have a different culture, something wrong with it, you know, a different type of weather pattern, stuff like that. And so I'm really hoping that these different planets are kind of similar to One Piece in the regard of, you know, just being a lot of variety to the series. Now, moving past that, one thing I want to point out with this episode is Jin. And there's something I've actually been neglecting to talk about when it comes to Jin as a character, and I decided, you know what, I want to talk about him right now. So, Jin. Jin is a character, as we know, he has a side effect to predict the future. And in the episode, this episode to be exact, it is revealed that the only way his side effect works, like if it works completely, is if he sees the person. Like, if he never saw me, okay, let's say I was in, you know, World Trigger, I was in the World Trigger verse. If he never saw me, he couldn't predict what actions I would take. Like, if I was to, let's say, kill his best friend or something, okay? If I was to kill his best friend or slap his best friend... He wouldn't know who was going to do it because he never saw me, but he could predict what was going to happen to his friend. So right there, it's really interesting when you find out that he has to see the person before he can, you know, see their future, the different things that are going to go on. So I, I see now we have a little bit of a limitation when it comes to Jin's power, but there's more things I want to talk about. As a character, Jin, he comes off as an impression of, like, that, that senpai character, that badass type character in a shonen series that you just do not want to underestimate. He's that type of character. And Jin, as a character, I wonder how he truly feels about seeing the future, because, let, let's face it, if you could see the future, and you could see what was going to happen in the future around you and stuff like that, you'd probably get miserable. You would, because you couldn't be really shocked or surprised about certain presents or gifts. Let's say, you know, you had your birthday coming up. You couldn't really be surprised or shocked if you got this special gift, or you couldn't be really surprised if something happens in the future, because, you know, it's a side effect. And I wonder how miserable Jin is as a character 
to know that he can see the entire future of the people around him and stuff. I, I mean, I really wonder how miserable he is. Because after looking at this episode, he kind of gives me that impression after watching this episode of World Trigger. But moving past that, the episode, th this episode... I loved it. It was a really good episode. It just, you know, does a lot of build-up. It was a lot of build-up in this episode, building up for the upcoming invasion from whatever neighborhood world is coming to invade them. You see at the end of the episode, these different gates open up, like, 50 different gates. I'm like, oh, shit. And the episode ends and leaves us on a cliffhanger. And, I mean, they attacked quite fast. Like, I didn't expect to see the invasion so soon. I thought we were going to have to wait another two or three episodes before the neighborhood world decided to attack, you know, our world. And I'm like, whoa, like, I didn't expect it to be so soon. I thought we were going to have a couple episodes, maybe our characters having some more, you know, training and stuff like that. But I guess not. We're going straight headfirst into hell. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below and let me know how you feel about this, you know, green screen. Hopefully it didn't fuck up, you know, and ruin this entire review. But anyways, you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi